we're gonna start this one off right okay everybody welcome back to another episode of the world's worst fishing I'm Chris Jones and thank you so much for being here today literally standing in my yard under this big tree talking to a camera so I'm sure my neighbors are probably thinking that I'm a little off which I totally am but today <clears throat> we're gonna revisit probably my most watched series of videos okay um, as the channel has grown as this hobby has grown as more and more people are now getting into lure making of all types uh, for my purposes more specifically soft plastic lure making I figured okay it's time to refresh the total bait makers guide beginners guide to soft plastics and in this video we're gonna be I mean this is gonna be like a tour de force we're gonna be going through all the things you need from you know basic things like your workstation obviously you need space in order to do this but what are the general uh, ooh, winds blowing but what are the general things that you need from I mean even even basic utensils heat gloves uh, an infrared uh, heat, heat um, thermo thermometer gun um, I mean geez what else clamps molds plastic colors glitter all the things that you need to be successful in this hobby this video is going to cover it all and we're going to hop into the garage or as the fish cave is the fish cave as i call it and uh that's where the magic happens you know you need a good space to work in you need a comfortable space that you um are inspired to work in you know i've been playing drums my whole life and it was always important for me to have a comfortable practice space you know clean not just junk everywhere something that i can walk into and really focus on why i'm there the same is with lure making you don't want all these exterior distractions you don't want to walk in there and be like ah what a dump no you want to walk in and be inspired to do your best and so we're going to see what that looks like for me it's not the best shop ever but um it gets the job done okay so first things first you need a shop you need space now what I recommend is um, unless you have you know real climate controlled workspace that you can use for a hobby like this um, I always recommend the whole garage thing right um, you can easily just take one wall my entire shop if we look at it here my entire shop is basically one wall okay and the way that I've chosen to do it is to put a workbench up, okay? This is, this is where every single bait is made, all right here centered around this work table. And um, a few key things, obviously, that you'll need on your work table. You can choose to put all the other stuff wherever you want, but things that you will need on your work table is obviously a microwave. That is the number one way that us home bait makers heat the plastic in order to use it. You will need that. You will also need some sort of lighting. You know, I have mounted shop lights and, and things like that. And then most importantly, you will need fans or some sort of ventilation. You can always mount a ventilation hood up above your workstation. Um, I'm not that fancy. I have a set of box fans, okay? Because Plastisol, when cooked, does give off fumes that you do not want to breathe. Ventilation, I cannot stress enough. Is very 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 important okay so you can see right here where I'm where I'm working this is where all my hot plastic all the fumes are gonna come from this general area I have a fan blowing this direction which is gonna blow the fumes into this fan which will draw in and then blow things out okay you can always wear a respirator of course um, for, and, and definitely do that if you're working in an enclosed environment um, another safety uh, tip or, or, or requirement, not even a tip, is a good pair of heat gloves, okay? And uh, you can get these at the automotive store. Those are what I have right there. You know, they're just really reinforced. You definitely need good heat gloves. So the first thing that you need is a workstation in order to do your work. And one of the first investments that you'll need to make is basically from your local Walmart, okay? You're gonna need Pyrex cups. And this is the off-brand Pyrex. This is the Anchor. I've been using those for, God, eight years. And uh, they do just fine. You can get several different sizes. You know, this is the, this is the one cup size. Generally, home bait makers use this small size. 
and then what what is known as the medium size the two cup uh, you can get the really really big one over there that one's four cup um, but just some pyrex cups is all you need this is like a 70 dollars microwave from target um, you're also going to need some little measuring spoons okay i recommend these little aluminum ones that way you can measure out um, glitters and things like that precisely also from Walmart, just some cheap silverware. These are what I like to stir the plastic with. Later on when we're doing some demonstration, uh, you will see all of these utensils in action. Obviously a pair of scissors, uh, because why not pliers? Why not uh, glue back there? Uh, this is for um, mainly just gluing eyeballs to swim baits, but you never know when you need some good super glue. And this is, this is uh, oh, I guess my battery's out. Okay, that's, why won't it stop beeping? Anyway, this is a heat gun, which is very important. I need to get this working so that I can use it today. Okay, well, I think I got my heat gun fixed. Uh, the connection, I guess, to the battery was either bad or the battery is getting low. But um, from, you know, those are, from, from there, that's basically your, your basic utensils that you need. Now comes the expensive stuff. Okay, so the first and most important ingredient, actual physical ingredient, in your soft plastic lures is the actual soft plastic material. This is my favorite Plastisol brand, okay? There are many different plastics that, that you can buy. Um, you know, maybe five or six different, different brands come to mind for those uh, d just specific to soft plastic lures. You know, color technologies comes to mind. Um, Calhouns, uh, let's see, what else? Um, Polysol, you have dead-on plastics. Uh, there's MF manufacturing, Lurecraft. So there are many options to choose from. Um, I always go with dead-on plastics. You know, to me, what makes a good Plastisol, especially for the home bait maker that's doing, you know, relatively small volume of baits, quality is important. You're really taking your time and you want to do things right. To me, what makes a good plastic is clarity. That way you can make clear baits and your color saturation just looks a little more pure. Clarity. Um, lack of bubbles and heat resistance. You know, we're putting our plastic in the microwave, which is terrible. I, you, know, you can burn the resins and dead on plastic just checks all the boxes for me as far as heat resistance, clarity, bubbles, just total workability for the home bait maker. Um, and the common sizes, no matter what brand you go with, you're gonna see gallon jugs, okay? And then five gallon buckets and those are kind of the two sizes that, that you're going to be going with. Your normal gallon of plastic will run you about $30, and then your five gallons will be anywhere from $100, $105, um, and then shipping, you know, obviously, unfortunately, is expensive because, you know, this is heavy liquid materials. So to get five gallons to your door is about $130, um, and that's par for the course, um, pretty much brand to brand. Okay, now let's take a look at molds. There are several different type of molds. Um, you have silicone molds, which are sort of like your entry level pricing. Um, they create phenomenal baits. So don't think that necessarily cheaper is worse, but we're gonna look at some aluminum molds first. Then we'll take a look at some CNC molds. Uh, excuse me, some silicone molds. Okay, so here is just a nice little variety of some aluminum molds and Aluminum molds are expensive, okay? Um, Plastisol in your molds are, I would say, the biggest barrier to entry, as far as financial barriers to entry, um, goes for this hobby. And, you know, there's, there's a couple of upsides to it, however. For example, this $60 mold right here, this is a four cavity stickworm mold, okay? This is a basic injection mold. The plastic gets injected through the top, it, fit, it then pressurizes the mold, and then the plastic fills in the cavities. This was a $60 mold, okay? $60. I've also had it for well over five years, and guess what? It's not slowing down. So yeah, it can cost a lot of money to get molds, but once you have them, you have them. So let's start with the cheapest version of a aluminum mold, okay? It's by far your casted aluminum, okay? So let's open this up and this is a do-it mold. Pretty much your only casted aluminum molds that you're gonna find are all from the do-it company, all right? And we can see that this is a little three-inch ripper swim bait thing, but 
let's take a closer look. Let's take a look at it. You can see kind of real, oop, real rough, coarse, unrefined finishing, okay? It doesn't look like a fine Swiss watch, right? It's coarse and unrefined. Well, as goes the finishing on the mold is the finishing on your bait. Plastisol is one of the most malleable uh, materials that there is, and it's gonna mold to every little unevenness inside, inside of this mold, okay? Now, does that make a bad bait? No, it's just gonna make a bait that has a little bit of a rough, coarse, unrefined, dull finish, okay? And that's basically the price you pay for going with a cheap mold. This is about $36, okay? Um, from there, you have CNC machined aluminum, okay? And just look at the difference in overall finishing and detail. You know, everything is shiny. I mean, it, it, it looks immaculate, okay? And that's what the rest of these molds are. They are all CNC machine aluminum. These two are what's known as open pour, okay? Because there's no hole, there, there's no opening, right, for injection. These, you have to actually tilt the cup, okay? To fill the mold these are old school open pour which we do a lot of open pouring on this channel you can actually be a little bit more creative with open pouring it just allows you to place color where you want it very precisely and you can make some patterns um, that you just simply cannot get an injection but here's another cnc aluminum mold this is a little punch crawl okay that's one from angling ai molds I do a lot of work with Angling AI Molds. They're kind of one of the sponsors of this channel along with Dead On Plastics. And uh, he creates the finest molds on the market. And before we go any farther, because we are discussing injection molds, we need to talk about how you use them. And this is a hand injector. And it's quite literally just a big aluminum syringe, okay? You can see it has a nozzle on the top, which fits down into a mold. And they're all 5 eighths of an inch, okay? So pretty much any hand injector you, you can buy is gonna fit any injection mold. And you literally plunge the plastic, okay? You just push down on the handle. And again, all of this will be demonstrated later. And the plastic will fill this runner, that's called the runner. And then the pressure from you forcing the plastic in will then fill all of these cavities, okay? So that of course is a uh, CNC machine ribbon tail worm injection mold. And before we move on, I just wanted to touch on a few other types of injection systems. Earlier, we had just a regular single injector in our hand, okay? It was basically half of this, okay? But uh, our friends over at Bass Tackle, which, uh, which is one of the, which, which is another uh, excellent mold manufacturer, they produce the finest in, in hand injectors on the market. And this is the dual injector, okay? And what it does is it does two colors in a bait and funnels color A, color B into this blending block. The colors then meet in the middle and that's how you get a laminate effect um, or two colors in an injection mold. Obviously, you guessed it, this one over here is the triple injector, again from Bass Tackle. And it does the same thing, it funnels three colors into, into the same mold so that you can get three color layered effects in injection. So really cool stuff there. Now, you know, these are expensive. That's, I mean, this, the triple injector system is about $400. I don't remember what the dual injector is anymore, but uh, check out Bass Tackle uh, for pretty much all your injector needs. They make the best injectors as of now. And uh, I do not recommend cheap injectors because this stuff is inherently dangerous. And real quick, just wanted to show you just two little examples here of silicone molds. So, this is an awesome finesse worm. You can see just absolutely incredible execution. And silicone molds can be bought fairly cheap, you know. You can see it's pliable, of course, because it is silicone. And you can make open pour worms of pretty much the same quality as having an open pour aluminum version. There's a few tricks you can do with aluminum that you cannot do in silicone, but if you just want to learn hand pouring, um, silicone is a great way to enter the space without spending a lot of money. This is a seven inch swim bait. This is a Stank X mold, 
and uh, I'll put all I mean, pretty much everything we're using today I'll put links in the description below so that you can at least get familiar with these companies and the materials and the cost you can write out a budget if you're interested in starting the hobby but I mean that right there for example is a $35 mold and it makes absolutely incredible swim baits that are of the same quality as in anything that you're seeing uh, in stores or, or from other bait makers. You don't have to have aluminum. Now, there are a few things that you can do with an aluminum swim bait mold um, that you cannot do in silicone, but this is a great way to get started. And like I said, the price is right when it comes to silicone molds. Okay, now let's talk colorants, okay? Um, there are several manufacturers offering pigments for the home bait maker. This is what we use to actually color the plastic. Lureworks, which is color technologies, is probably, I would say, the leader right now in pigments. Um, I think more people are going to Lureworks, uh, liquid pigments, and some of their powdered pigments, probably more than any other uh, manufacturer. However, you know, Dead On Plastics, who... Uh, you know, makes the plastisol that we use has an incredible collection of colorants, and you can see I have a whole box of them there. And uh, I mean, their their pigments are absolutely top notch. I just I started with Lureworks colors, and so a lot of my color building knowledge and way of thinking is kind of based on using their colors and their densities. You know, some colors are more watered down than others. The Lureworks are generally very. Um, consistent as far as that goes and uh yeah i mean you can't go wrong with with either one another thing you'll need is flakes and glitters again lure works um is killing it in that regard also lure craft yeah you can see there lure craft fisherman shop excellent flake they're selling probably the highest quality glitter because it comes from polycrill and uh, that's what all of these are as well your common sizes are 0 0.015 0 0.035 and 0 0.065 so this is the big 0 0.065 you can see those big hexagons there this is more your medium size right there and let's find some of the small yeah well I know I got some somewhere here we go that's considered your small size right there 0 0.015 also we use a lot of powders okay uh, let's just grab one so this is white pearl powder again i use a lot of lure work stuff let me see if i can get this lid off yeah here we go you can see i have a lot of stuff but you don't need a lot of stuff in order to make awesome colors and a wide variety of colors so that is just straight white mica powder and there are several different shades and varieties of mica powders also fancy color shift powders um, we can get to some of that hopefully but um, let's get started on a little bit of demonstration from preparing the plastic to adding the color to making the bait. We're going to show you everything that you need to know. Okay, welcome to my garage floor, aka where the plastisol buckets hang out. And you can see there's a couple different things here. We have, this says worm, worm blend, swim bait, jerk bait blend. It's a little scratch, but that says craw tube blend. So a good plastisol manufacturer is going to offer you different durometers of plastic and what i like about dead on plastics is that they make it very easy for you to determine where to start when you are a beginner or even a, a seasoned bait maker and determining what durometer you want for each bait okay so they have everything from finesse to worm to swim bait jerk bait uh, swim bait jerk bait craw tube and then salt water and what that does is that gives the user a really good idea of where to start <clears throat> when purchasing plastic because why do I want to buy five gallons of craw tube if I'm mainly making worms right okay well then I'd be better off buying a five gallon of worm and then maybe a one gallon jug is something else right depending on what I make the most I can kind of budget my plastisol purchases accordingly and dead on plastic um, it's a phthalate free plastic so it's, it's healthier for you to work with because it's made without phthalates. It's a true phthalate-free plastic. 
And they offer a sinking blend and a floating blend. So the black buckets are the denser, heavier sinking plastic, and then the white buckets are the hyper buoyant plastic. So you, you have a lot of options to choose from, and that's what you want, I think, in uh, home bait making. So first things first, whenever you go to prepare your plastic, you need to mix it. So I'm gonna take this lid off, okay? And you can see that raw plastic looks just like milk. I wanna mix it up really well. That way I have the resin stirred in appropriately with the rest of it, which the rest of it is usually plasticizer, heat stabilizers, things like that. It's all flexible PVC resin base. So I really wanna mix my plastic well. That's the most common mistake I think is people get into the hobby and they just don't know yet from experience that plastic needs to be mixed thoroughly and then cooked properly, okay? So now that we've done our mixing, we're gonna measure this out and then we're gonna move on to the next important part, which is how to cook this stuff properly. Okay, so we're gonna start with just one cup of plastic, okay? So this is a 900 watt microwave, I think. It, Used to say so somewhere right in there. Okay, so for that amount of plastic, I wanna start with two minutes. That way, the plastic is all the way in the gel phase, but it's not overcooked and scorched. So we will meet you back in two minutes, and then we'll see what needs to happen from there. Okay, so that plastic just came out of the microwave. Okay, and one of the things that I also love about the dead-on plastic is you can see it's not smoking a lot. There's very, very little smoke, and um, I really appreciate that. So, if we look at this plastic, the top layer is virtually clear, okay, gin clear. Just a few little micro bubbles um, in, in there, you know, that could be from when we stirred the plastic in the bucket, could be exposure to moisture, um, however, I now need to thoroughly stir this cup, okay? I need to thoroughly stir it because the bottom, the bottom of the cup, the layer of plastic on the bottom is not cooked all the way. It's still a little jelly-like, okay? It needs to be super runny like that. But the bottom of the cup is always the least cooked part. So you need to stir the bottom into the rest of the cup, okay? And then cook again because even if the surface temperature, right, of the plastic reads high enough, which is 350 degrees, the bottom of the cup is not cooked, okay? So plastisol fully converts over from the gel phase to now being ready to use once it reaches 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So a lot of times that top layer is gonna be cooked all the way, but the bottom layer is not. So once you go to use that plastic, the plastic's not gonna set up, it's gonna feel like jelly, it's gonna be sticky, and you're gonna be wondering what you did wrong. So here we go, this same cup going back in, and I wanna do it at about 30 second increments, okay? And then whenever I take that out, we'll take a look. Okay, that plastic right there is looking really good. Let's just kinda of give it another little mix in. 375, perfect, okay? That means that our plastic is fully cooked. However, you see that we've kind of stirred a few little bubbles into it. We have a couple options. We can let the plastic sit. Those bubbles will work themselves out in a matter of minutes, or we can use a vacuum pot. And just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna head over to the vacuum chamber. This is the number one way to get rid of bubbles. Whether or not your plastic is bubbling over the top of the cup and it's out of control, or if it's minimal like this, a vacuum chamber will solve the problem. Okay, we're gonna take our plastic, and then we're gonna set it in the vacuum pot, okay? And if you want to really see in depth how I like to use these vacuum pots, I have an entire video dedicated to just using your vacuum chamber to get air out of your plastisol. So basically what this machine does is this creates a vacuum in this pot which sucks all the air out through this pump, okay? And in doing so, it removes all the moisture, well, the moisture and more specifically the air that would be in that plastic is now gone. So once we take this out, you will not see another single bubble. Okay, now look at that cup of plastic. It is 100% bubbleless, okay? So now we're ready to add some color. 
and we're just going to show you a real simple uh, single color first, okay? And I'm just going to take some Lure Works Black, and I'm just going to dump some in. You can count exact drops. A good way to start is about 40 drops of color per one measuring cup of plastic. That's kind of how I learned my formulas back in the day. Um, certain colors like black, you usually don't need that many drops because black is always the dominant color um, when, when mixing your colors. It's very thick and uh, you don't need a lot of it for things to get, to get thick. So you can see right there, that's already extremely opaque. All right, black with blue flake, the most bass catching color maybe of all time. Now we're just going to take one of our little measuring spoons here. This is a half tablespoon, or teaspoon, sorry. And we'll just dump some in. And you can get very specific with your measurements if you are someone who really wants to record each formula. That's how I started. Now I just kind of make unique things every time, it seems. Um, but you can certainly develop formulas, which in my opinion is really good practice in order to... Um, develop some sort of consistency. So our plastic is 282 degrees. That's a little on the cold side. Usually by the time you get done mixing up your color, it's time for a short reheat, 30 more seconds, and then we're ready to run our first baits. Okay, so I have the Do It Casted Aluminum Mold, and then I have one of Angling AI's CNC machined aluminum molds. We're gonna just run the same color in each just to kind of show you the difference in the two finishes. So, we're just going to stir it up, both gloves on, and then we're just going to draw up the plastic with the injector, and it's as easy as just inserting it into the sprue opening, and then we're just going to gently press down. We, we want to use just enough force to keep the injector arm moving, okay? And then once you feel it stop, the mold is full. You can see I then squirted some more into that opening because you want to top off the baits like that. Hot plastic is like any other thing that's hot. It contracts whenever it cools, okay? It's gonna shrink down. I guess this mold has two injection ports. Have not used this thing yet, okay? Always important to fill those holes back up. Purge the rest of the plastic back into the cup, and that's it. You can just look, just look at look at the finish there. Everything's smooth, shiny. It's just a tad bit more refined. Well, in in person, it's a lot more refined. But as you can see, even a beginner budget mold can get you a very nice functional bait. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those whatsoever. Pour those in white pearl, put them on an Alabama rig, and hang on. But as far as getting professional quality baits, you know. There is a difference in CNC machine aluminum finish and just the, the type of detailing that you can get, right? You can see those little, those little uh, paths there in the, in the claws. You know, you, you just really can't compare the two. A CNC machine can give you much more detail than a casted molded aluminum. Okay, now let's take the black with blue flake that we just did and then show you some double injection or laminate injection with the twin injector. Okay, so this black with blue flake is exactly how we did it earlier. And now we're gonna do a black, a black and blue laminate with that black and blue flake. So I'm just gonna add some blue. This is another Lure Works blue color. It's called Thalo Blue. Just the label over the years came off. <laughs> And then we're gonna take some little silver. This is the tiny size, 0 0.008, okay? Stuff's like powder. And blue and little silver flake to me always looks really good. So we're gonna laminate these two colors just to show you some basic dual injection. Okay, so the biggest tip that I can give you when doing laminates is that both cups of plastic need to be close in temperature. So if this one's 320, we want this one to be plus or minus five, you know, degrees of 320. So we're gonna mix that one up. That's 325. Mix this one up, 319. That's actually really close. So now we can actually go ahead and run these. Okay, so with both gloves on, we're ready to use our dual injector. 
and you just put it into both sides trawl up the plastic and then we're going to set it into this blending block and now we're going to inject the mold and that blending block quite literally just puts both colors into the mold at once okay done just like that let's do a drum roll all right let's see how our laminates did i'm gonna go out on a limb and say they look pretty cool because it's hard for black and blue to not look good Ooh. look at that this is the angling ai punch crawl and uh golly look at this that is a laminate whenever you see a two color bait like that and that's how it's done you literally take color a and color b and inject them on top of one another look at that there is the laminate let's uh take him off yeah there you go that is what i would consider more basic dual injection um and what I mean by that is just simple colors, you know, just, just a black and blue laminate. Now, I mean, you can get crazy with it, trying to match crawfish and shad patterns and all, all sorts of things. Um, but as far as a, you know, simple laminate color idea with a high probability for success, and it also looks sexy as heck, black with blue is a great place to start. You know, you can start laminating uh, pearls with regular pigments and, and, and then start swirling the two. Um, dual injection can get, I mean, just as complicated as anything, but this right here is a great place to start. Okay, now let me show you some basic hand pouring. We're going to be using some aluminum molds, okay? And I think hand pouring in aluminum is where the greatest frontier is. Um, you can certainly do some amazing pours in silicone, like I mentioned earlier. But we're going to show you what is my favorite way to hand pour, which is an aluminum open pour mold on a heat source, that way we can use heat to our advantage, and we'll talk more about that right now. Okay, so I have some more of the same plastic measured out. This is more of the dead-on plastics black bucket swim bait blend, but you can see I have just your basic Walmart heat griddle, okay? Well, it's time to turn this thing on. We'll set it to about 250 degrees, and we're gonna let these molds preheat a little bit. I've got them clamped together with some just clamps from Home Depot, and what's beautiful about aluminum is how we can harness heat. You can put these in the oven if you want to, you can flame them with a torch, or you can do what I think is the best method and just set them on a heat plate. And the heat allows us to blend layers together very naturally and let the plastic gel and bond strong, okay? Because if we wanna pour layers in our swim bait mold, we need those layers to bond together, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up this cup of plastic here. You can see I don't have very much measured out. One of the cool things about hand pouring is that you can measure out precise amounts of plastic that you need and you don't have as much waste left over. All right, and here we go. Just like that, this is open pouring. And just from experience, I know to pour this mold, the belly color just to above that little hook slot insert that you see sticking up there. This is just gonna be a two color laminate. Often I do three colors and uh, do all kinds of skin layers and things like that. If you wanna see some more intricate and uh, complex hand pouring, uh, I have a lot of videos on that on this channel as well as other beginner guides and tips for beginners. Um, everything from laminate injection, single injection, color creation, um, golly, all sorts of, of techniques and demonstrations. So anyway, this is the bottom color. And what's great is I'll show you here in just a second. That's all the leftover we have. Very, very minimal leftover. Okay, now we're going to pour this green hypershift top layer. Okay, that gorgeous stuff right there is this. Again, it's uh, one of the uh, pigments um, from Dip Your Car, which there'll be a link down below. And to top this off, I literally just wanna pour from the top 
and just let it flow back. The mold is nice and hot now, so that plastic will flow into the tail nice and steady like that. You want to be careful not to over pour. But if you just kind of let it fill itself nice and slow, <coughs> normally you are good to go. That rhymed. Here's some sirens in the background. That's not good. Hope everyone is okay. Okay, there you go. So now I have the molds sitting between 300 and 350 degrees and they are already hot enough to boil water. So I'll probably let them sit on the heat for another five minutes or so, and then I'm gonna cut the griddle off, and then you just wait for the molds to cool down enough to where you can take the baits out. And that is pretty much the X's and O's of hand pouring in aluminum. Okay, and there we go. That is how it's done. All right, so we can just pull this off the mold. There it is. Nice little hook slot on the bottom. We'll attach some eyes to these and then we are gonna sign this one out. And there we go. Do some eight millimeter silver eyes on there. And awesome, awesome five inch shad color swim baits. Okay, well there's sort of a spread that kind of gives a little overview of everything that we've done today and uh, sort of encompasses, I think, soft plastic lure making. Like, if there was a picture to describe it, that's it. Little bit of everything going on. So, yeah, we have all the baits that we made and just sort of a snapshot of some of the tools, uh, materials, molds, plastics, colors, powders, glitters, injectors. You can see the dual injector down here. Uh, it's, it's sort of a little snapshot of everything. And, um, you know, wow, this, this hobby is just never ending. There's so much that you can do. Uh, it's so rewarding, it's so much fun. You know, it's expensive to get into it first, but, you know, pretty soon, I think you'll see the benefits of it. And in the long run, you will save money. Like I said, once you get that injector, once you buy that mold, those pretty much last forever. The cost from there is getting more plastic, and you know just little things like that like glitters and colors they last a long 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 time so with that said um wow we covered a lot today we kind of hit on a lot of points from you know workspace the materials different types of molds different types of materials different types of injection you know we demonstrated single injection double injection basic hand pouring um yeah we looked at a lot of stuff and i hope this has uh, the, the purpose of this video was for the viewer to gain perspective on what this hobby is all about, sort of what the tools of the trade are, what, you know, what techniques and skills do you need, and kind of really what does it all look like if I want to get started. So hopefully we accomplished that today, and I hope you guys have enjoyed. Oh man, it feels good to get out of that garage and uh, get a little bit of fresh air. That garage just gets a little hot, even on a nice day like today. It's not, it's, it's overcast, it's not too hot. You know, it, it's October, so weather actually is pretty decent here in Florida. But uh, man, sometimes it feels good to get outside. But in any event, I um, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you have found it useful and inspiring. And if you're thinking about getting into this hobby, I hope you will keep coming back to this video as a really good resource. I'm gonna have several links in the description down below. Uh, to where you can find all the sorts of materials that we use today. Um, you know, I'll have links to where I like to get colors, where I like to get glitters, where I like to get injectors, molds, plastic, all of these things. Um, you know, anybody can go figure out where to get a microwave, right? And, and to get all the other things. But it's the specific bait making materials that if you're not familiar with this market, um, you kind of need a little bit of direction on where to look. So links in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope uh, anyone who's new to this channel who's watched this video, I hope you'll tag along and uh, go back and, re -watch and and watch some of my older stuff to maybe get a little bit more in-depth look at certain techniques and, and certain types of color building with certain types of materials. And uh, hopefully we'll catch all of you in the next video. We're gonna sign this one off.